here we're talking to David Wu, and he's the first uh, Chinese American congressman in American history. Uh, we're so happy and honored to have you here. It's good to be with you. Yes, I heard that you're writing a book about American democracy, right? What brought this idea to you? Well, I think that um, it's a very important topic, that um, it's sometimes not well understood. Uh, and hopefully if By I... By whom? by a lot of people, including Americans. Um, and I think that uh, getting this book published uh, in China in Chinese uh, will be informative uh, to those who have a chance to read it. And um, it will promote understanding between the two peoples, which um, gives us a better chance to live in common uh, in the world with as little conflict as possible. Yeah, I think communication is always very important. But talking about, Amer um, uh, about American democracy, uh, what is American democracy stand for? Well, I think that it's empowerment of people, um, that people get to make their own decisions, mm -hmm. that people uh, get to determine their own future, mm -hmm. as well as, as the uh, direction of uh, their community and the country as a whole. Mm -hmm. And that is what... Um, the founders of this country wanted. They didn't want to be told what to do by the, uh, the king of Britain. And uh, we won our independence, and that's the way that uh, this, we have striven uh, to, to operate our government ever since. You mentioned about that people can have uh, their decision freely. So what if people decided not to have the democracy? I just don't envision that happening. Why you don't envision that? You see, we, uh, from 2016's election? Uh, well, we are Americans. We believe in democracy uh, despite whatever happens in any given election. You know, we were talking, and as disturbing as uh, the current administration is, I think in the grand scope of history, this will be uh, a tiny ripple uh, in the ocean of time, and we will survive this. Our tiny ripple? Our institutions will survive this and they will rebound uh, to a better state, um, and uh, we will recover. Mm, wow, you are so confident. Oh, yeah, yeah, you, you know what? You, you cannot be an engineer without uh, being positive about solutions. Mm -hmm. You cannot be a business person without being positive about solutions, mm -hmm. and you certainly cannot be in politics or in, as a statesman without looking at solutions rather than at problems. Mm -hmm. Uh, positive solutions in our future, but for now we're talking about democracy of America. So what is this uh, core value of this? Well, I, <laughs> it's interesting that, you know, people in America or people um, uh, overseas uh, tend to look at, oh gee, it's freedom. But I think there's something even more fundamental uh, than uh, American freedom. And that is our adherence to our Constitution and to the rule of law. Is that's the framework that we all share. People come to America from many different places and from many different cultures. But what uh, weaves us together uh, are our laws and our Constitution. And I think that that is, at core, the most important thing, and that is what creates the space for freedom in America and for self-government. So talking about freedom, and some people understanding is freedom is you control yourself and people will con not control you. What do you, do you agree with this? Well, I think that uh, outside of criminal conduct, uh, yes, you get to control yourself and other people don't get to control you. So you are writing this book and you want this to be translated into Chinese. Yes. And uh, why you want all the Chinese people to read this? Well, as I mentioned earlier, it is uh, something that will promote understanding between the United States and China, and that will be um, uh, good for um, the ability of the, the both countries in this most important relationship uh, of our century, uh, good for both countries uh, to understand each other and to be, be able to get along better. And also, I think the information, um, if the Chinese uh, readers uh, choose to absorb it, will be something that um, is useful for them in, in their own lives and what they decide to do uh, about their environment. You are Chinese-American, but you were born in the United States. No. 
no, no. I was not. I came when I was six and a half years old. Oh, from where? Yeah. Well, I was born in Taiwan, but because uh, of the Lao Jia, Suzhou. Suzhou. Mm -hmm. uh, do you speak any Chinese? Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, <laughs> But I can, because I can. Okay, wonderful. Yeah. So, so talking about the misunderstanding. So, what are the typical misunderstanding for the American democracy? Well, I think that uh, people are very negative. You know, and and as I uh, as you for mentioned, ex for example, well, uh, people uh, are very negative, and they think that they every group thinks that somebody else runs Ameri American democracy. So the left thinks that right-wingers do. Um, the, the people on the right think that liberal media and the left does. Um, you know, everybody objects to money in the political system. But I've got to tell you this. You know, um, my uh, races were funded by donations that were, on average, $175. And a lot of them were much smaller. So I think that there are these misunderstandings that lead people sometimes mm -hmm. to not participate as much as they can or they should. I think that this last election, you referred to our current situation, mm -hmm. um, we all try to believe ourselves and to tell people that elections make a difference and that voting makes a difference. Mm -hmm. Well, 2016 really illustrates made a that, huge that, that, difference that that voting counts mm -hmm. and that elections make a difference mm -hmm. and I just want to mention this mm -hmm. that Mr. Trump's margin in three critical states Wisconsin Michigan and Pennsylvania if you added up all those voters mm -hmm. they would not fill up a Big Ten football stadium you know and they're less than a hundred thousand people mm -hmm. in three states and so a little bit more turnout could have turned this election the other way. Elections make a difference, obviously, mm -hmm. and voting makes a difference. Mm -hmm. So what do you want to say in this season? Because we are going to have the very important uh, voting on November. So what, what do you want to tell the, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Go out and vote, and I hope that you will vote for Democrats so that Donald Trump will be stopped dead in the water in terms of his domestic agenda, <laughs> well, very bluntly. <laughs> uh, well, uh, I believe that uh, many people hope this can happen. But why there are so many people? Well, you, you see, what's the people? Because people, I think it's good about this country that people have their decision. They can make their own decision freely. And so people see things in a different way. And I think this is good, right? But what are the? real important issues of this country? Well, now, nowadays. Well, well <laughs> there are just too many to name. Uh, I think mm. that perhaps um, the most important mm. is um, our conduct, believe it or not, of foreign policy, mm. because war and peace um, is the most important thing for just about any state, for any government. Mm -hmm. um, Americans tend not to think about foreign policy, but it is, uh, it is uh, absolutely crucial. And number two is maintenance of our democratic institutions, um, because uh, that's what allows us to live free and to make our own decisions. Now, people don't think about those fundamental things. I do. but. Um, in terms of uh, policy uh, for uh, the election, uh, obviously health care, because this administration has been very uh, hostile to it. Um, who gets to benefit from our economy? It, are those benefits going to be uh, spread more equally, or are they going to be collected into the hands of a fortunate few? Um, and these are things that uh, are really, really important uh, uh, as policy matters going forward. Um, and uh, I hope that people will think deeply about it and make their uh, voting decisions accordingly. Mm -hmm. So I know that you were the first uh, congressman, Chinese-American congressman. So what does this mean to you until now? Well, it was an honor to serve. Um, and uh, uh, I thank the people of Oregon uh, for uh, that um, 
opportunity to serve. I appreciate it deeply. Um, it is uh, a, a, a deep honor to wake up every morning and then ask the question, how can I make the world a slightly better place today? Mm -hmm. And there are not very many jobs in the world that allow you uh, to do that. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously, you know, I um, am also uh, honored to have been the uh, first, or still am, the first Chinese American uh, to serve in the House of Representatives. Um, and um, uh, I worked on uh, issues of importance uh, to uh, Asian Americans. Um, you know, the Wen Ho Lee case uh, to require the um, Department of Energy uh, to uh, research their policies and to uh, file reports to Congress to make sure that there is no discrimination uh, going on there, to uh, pass legislation uh, to help uh, low-income, low-education uh, Asian Americans uh, stay in college, get into college, and stay in college, uh, and uh, other pieces of legislation that uh, have a real function. I didn't do too much stuff that was uh, uh, you know, purely for symbolic reasons, but what I did do for um, that was hopefully helpful for symbolic uh, uh, reasons is to go around uh, the country nationally in Asian American communities and be a symbol to young people mm -hmm. that you can do anything that you try to do. You can achieve high levels of education, you can um, do things professionally or job-wise, and you can aspire to political life and the highest offices in the land. Uh, so it was a deep honor to serve, and it was a deep honor to be the first Chinese American in the House of Representatives. You are also Asian American people, but during you, you know, the, the time you served as the congressman, you also went through some uh, setbacks. So how did you... When, when that comes, you know, it's always like that. So how did you went through that? Well, you know, you, you have to bounce. You have to, uh, you have to be tough. You have to uh, have a thick skin um, because... Thick uh, skin? Yeah, you know, uh, when, when people say things about you that are not true, um, you know, uh, you, you can't just um, be, what, uh, be uh, so insulted that you can't move, that you can't act. So, uh, you know, the, the colloquial term is you have to have a thick skin so that you can keep on doing things. Because when you're in politics, people are going to accuse you of things. People are going to lie about you. People are going to call you all sorts of names. And that is part of the job. So even though you are not on that position, but still you are uh, fighting, you are still you're, you're a great fighter. So what can all the other people do to make a better future? And what's your suggestion? Elections matter. Uh, a core um, activity, uh, something that's absolutely crucial, is to vote at election time. Um, and not just at the national level that uh, gets attention, but whether it's city council or, um, or county commission, you know, those are the elections where the decisions touch your life every single day. Mm -hmm. um, whether it's your roads or your you know, water service, your garbage pickup, mm -hmm. those are things that touch your life every single day and they're absolutely crucial. And obviously it's important to vote uh, up and down the ballot uh, because, as you mentioned earlier, uh, the election of 2016 made such a huge difference uh, in all of our lives. Yes, well, thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.